Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Kathy, and it is June 30th, and it is absolutely delightful to be with you. Those of us who are here live, we're having a little chat beforehand. Uh, it's actually 15 minutes after the hour that I started the recording. So we've been chatting probably for about 20 minutes, and I invite you to come. Those of you who watch the videos, delighted that you are here watching the videos, but delight you, delight you. I invite you to come and join us for our little prelude where you never know what we're going to talk about. All kinds of, we talked about near-death experiences today and the power of thoughts. So let us begin. Those of you who are familiar with the heart source, just declare a heart source. Feel that heart source gather around you. And those of you who are not familiar with the heart source, and it always helps those of us who know heart source, let's form it. Move into the center of your chest, which is where your heart chakra is. And imagine yourself going deep within. Just bring your consciousness in. Sometimes I see myself as a little bitty person going into this huge vortex of energy. And move as deep as you can. You can use your breath to bring it your, your consciousness within. Stay there, but move around. Feel yourself just almost come out of your body in the sense and move around to the back, to the back of the heart chakra, and just walk right into the back of the heart chakra. Somebody's a little bit too low. If you find it kind of difficult to get in, just move your awareness around. There you go, and just go right in. Go deeply, deeply, deeply within the back of your heart chakra. It'll be like going through an alleyway, a tunnel, um, a hallway, until you step into this amazing room, which is your sacred space. There you go. I'm just going to let you get in touch with that energy. There you go. And now keeping your awareness there, come out and go around to the front again and go into the front of your third eye. Just move deep within and keep going deeper and ask to see the violet flame because we were told by Amiya in the books, The Hidden Structures, that the violet flame is resting in the back of the front of your third eye. We're going to activate that around our R in just a few minutes. There you go. Now go around to the back and go into the back of your third eye. And again, if you don't go in easily, kind of move around with your consciousness. Somebody just slipped right in and slip right in. Good. So you have your consciousness in four places. Alma tells us it's four different dimensions. Now, intend, ask for, draw a beam of energy from your heart chakra to your third eye. Goes right up the center of you. Feel what it's like to have that connection. And continue upward, sending that energy straight up to the center of the universe. It knows exactly where to go. And now staying there, you're in six different places, six different dimensions, send it straight down to the center of the earth. There you go. And as Amma says, you are now grounded above and below. We think of grounded and just below, but you are grounded above and below. So it is definitely walking between the worlds from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. Go ahead and from your heart, connect with your healing team. Those of you who haven't met your healing team yet, I'm not going to take you through it, but I just want you to know that everybody who works with the work that I do and with AMA, we have, you can have a huge healing team, but you always have your soul self, which is what AMA calls the higher self, your body soul, who is the soul of your body. You are not the soul of your body. You are borrowing this body. Your encodement team and your soul healing team. 
and then there's all kinds of others depending upon the person and what they do. Good, and we are asking them to watch this. We're going to start our first healing. Command, chakra spin, spin as fast as is safe for you. Breathe in. Go ahead and inhale through your nose to a count of five. You'll then hold it for a count of seven and exhale through your mouth at a count of eight. And when you inhale, bring in the color, your color for God. So inhale, one, two, three, four, five, bringing in your color for God. Hold, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out. Exhale through your mouth and you are bringing out, releasing any congestion. It can be in whatever color you see. That's probably a three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale now to a count of five. I'll let y'all do the do the breathing yourself now, bringing in the color of God, holding. I always image the holding as the energy is going through, collecting all of the congestion and exhaling it. As your chakras are spinning as fast as is safe for you, you are also releasing congestion from your chakras and it is coming out with your breath. And in this way that we are doing it, and it's true for anybody who does breath work. Your aura actually cleanses that energy layer by layer until it leaves the seventh layer. There you go. And now declare, I am the sword. And this is the sword of Michael the Archangel or Mikael as he likes to be called. And if you have not received the sword of Michael the Archangel, Ask Archangel Michael to be with you. Extend palm up your dominant hand and say, may I have your sword, please? And Mikael will place his sword within the palm of your hand. Each time we ask, even though we've received it, I can feel the hilt of it. And I just grasp the hilt of the sword and then I move it. Point up, blade up in front of my heart. I'm just noticing the energy. And now to be able to become the sword, place the sword within your heart chakra and it will spread throughout your entire energy field. And it is now there. And all you need to do is to say, I am the sword and your entire physical, emotional, spiritual and energetic bodies become the sword, which means wherever you walk, you can transmute congestion. And the sword can get teeny nighty microns where you go in and with your, I use my finger and I just go in and say, I'm having congestion in my shoulder. And I do a little surgery there, point that sword there. And it can be light years long where you say, is there any congestion I can clear in the galaxy? And if you feel yourself being moved forward, you are the short, you are the sword light years long and you can clear congestion there. And I'm getting in our healing circle. We're going to do a little clearing in parts of the planet today. There you go. And let's go ahead and activate violet flame, violet flame. Please activate around the seventh layer of my arm. Now your R is expanding each time we do this. And let's give one more direction to our heart source, heart source. Please expand to the furthest reaches of my R or if my R is smaller than the tips of my fingers when I extend my arms outward, please to the seventh layer or the tips of my fingers, whichever is larger. So you have tremendous protection around you right now. All we have to do is to stay in the heart source. Easier said than done, I know, with what happens in life. But every time you leave your heart source, how do you know you left your heart source? You're angry, you're depressed, you're all kinds of other things, concerned, anxious, fearful. All you have to do is say heart source to go back into it.
Good. So we have protection through the heart source, through Michael's sword, through the violet flame. And now we're going to form another area of protection, which is the healing lecture room, which is an adaptation from something that I took from the Melchizedek method. And there is a floor of light below us. And when I say us, I mean every person who is ever listened to this Healing are through this Sunday ceremony, even if what they read, the message and stuff, you are automatically here, even if it's 100 years from now, because there is no time where we are at this moment, a floor of light below us, a canopy of light above us, pillars of light in each of the four corners. And there are, that's interesting, it's all from Archangel Gabriel's band of angels that are in encompassing the entire healing lecture room. They form the walls from pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar to pillar. And we are within this wonderful energy. I'm being told this is the energy of a prophet. Archangel Gabriel proclaims things. Our Archangel Gabriel does a lot of different things. Helps with communication in many ways. So I'm only thing that I can imagine is that we are going to do some stuff about communication and being able to speak our truth to others when we do the healing ceremony. And now there is a central pillar filled with infinitely filled with all of these wonderful beings and more and more come to see us every week as we've been doing these. And some are parading in right now. And it's the ones I always see. You may see different ones, but I see Yeshua and Buddha who always come in together, laughing, sending blessings. And with them are beings that they have worked closely with. Of course, with Yeshua, it's Mother Mary, Mary of Magdala, Mary of Bethany, Martha, Oh, that's interesting. This is uh, in the Catholic Church. We talk about Veronica, St. Veronica, who wiped the face of Jesus when he was carrying the cross. Kuan Yin is here. Healing. We're getting the energy of Athena coming in. You know, remember that when you see images of Athena, she had the shield and the sword, goddess of war, but she also had the olive branch, goddess of peace. There we go. Just feel the energy coming in. Your favorite beings are there. Just ask them to come in. Since I've been doing lots of Catholic stuff lately, I've, I've been called back to the mysticism part of Catholicism, which the mass is very mystical. And um, not away from what I'm doing, it's like both and, and just having an amazing experience. And I feel so connected in ways I hadn't in so many ways to Yeshua and Mother Mary and many of what we call the saints in the Catholic Church. And St. Jude, we worked with him. Gosh, it's been a long time, but he came in to talk about how there are St. Jude is called the patron of hopeless cases. And when he gave us his message, he said, there are no hopeless cases. There are no hopeless cases. Think about your favorite masters and saints. Cho hands of the seven rays are coming in. I'm, excuse me. Cho hands of the first 12 rays are coming in. Feel that energy. I have an energy coming in for me. I don't know if it's for everyone or not, but of the energy of those amazing beings who live within Mount Shasta. I'm going to a retreat at Mount Shasta at the, uh, in the middle of August, and I am being prepared in many ways for that. See who's coming in for you to prepare you for something that you are going to be doing. It could be a retreat. It could be a workshop. It could be your spiritual growth. 
Just notice who's coming. Ask, who is here? What are you being prepared for? By the way, some of you are going to be getting an upgrade. It's going to start. It has already started. It's going to continue today and will continue for months. An upgrade in your crystalline DNA and how it interfaces with the physical DNA. Okay. And now Hilarion, who is the Chohan or the head of the fifth ray of healing. It is a green jade color. Some people call them flames of healing. They show up that way also. He has stepped forward as has Yeshua, who is in his Incarnation as Sananda is the Chohan of the Resurrection Ray. Good one for, for Yeshua, isn't it? And Quan Yin is stepping forward also. I can't remember which number of Ray she's the Chohan of, but she definitely is. And Mother Mary is also, but Mother Mary's not involved in today's healing ceremony. So you have Hilarion, Yeshua, and Quan Yin. Looks like you have three different traditions there coming in. And Hilarion is saying, I invite you. This is now a healing room. And you will see your own private room amidst everyone else. And there is either a chair or a table, like a massage table, a very comfortable table. There for you, it is green, jade, in color. And either sit or lie down, whichever you're called to do. And by the way, it's your choice. Good. And what I'm getting is we are playing with light colors. When I uh, when I was in Houston, my office was at the Edgar Casey Center, and one of the co guys there, what do they call co administrators? He did a lot of work with light colors, and had lamps that had gels of light of different colors. And we are going to do light work on our body our bodies. Everybody's still in the heart source. I just double checked. Connect with your healing team again. They are gathered with you. And unlike what we did at the ARE Center in Houston is we're not using artificial light. We're going to be using beautiful, beautiful light that is coming in. And we are starting, first of all, greet your healing team in a special way and set your intention for the healing of your body, mind. So we can be, actually be working with depression here, but we are working for the to balance the physical causes of depression. So we're working on the neurotransmitters and the hormonal system as well. Declare, I am ready for the healing and bringing to wholeness of my body mind to the ultimate healing and wholeness possible for me. I am ready. To be revealed to me any place where there is victim consciousness or where I am holding back 
so that that is eliminated from me and my body mind has the energy to come into wholeness. I'm having all kinds of things going on in my gut as I'm saying those things, because of course I'm saying it for myself. The first light that is coming into you is the light to clear your aura. And it'll look different for each one of us. We request, each one of you can request it separately for yourself. I request the, I'm getting the range of vibration of light this time. Sometimes it's the exact vibration, but the range of vibration of light that is needed to dissolve, neutralize, elevate into the highest vibration of possible. Any energies within my aura and my chakras and other aspects of my energy field. Breathe in. Some of you may be feeling the need to inhale more deeply and to exhale. Please do that. It'll just happen. You don't have to force it. And Hilarion is telling me that when we do this, we are neutralizing things that are will develop to something physically in the future if it is not dissolved. We are dissolving those things in the emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies, which may be holding in physical discord or dis-ease. Healing team, please use the plug-in to correct, heal, balance, bring into perfection the HARA line, H-A-R-A line. When Amya gave us the hidden structures in hidden structures book, we found out that the HARA line actually has three layers. It's a tube, it's an empty, uh, not empty, but it has a way energy can come through, through the center of it. And then there's an inner layer, a middle layer, and then the outer layer. And the HAR line actually contains our encodement structure. It comes in when our, when the sperm and ovum produce that amazing amount of light that starts the new being. We all started in our own Big Bang. Had the privilege of seeing that happen one time. An amazing explosion of energy. And the horror line comes in. And it gradually unfolds. Not the horror line. The genetic code, our encodement structure, unfolds as we progress in our development from a one-celled being to a two cell, to a four cell, to an eight cell, to a 16 cell, 30 second, and it just keeps going, right? Hara line is being balanced for all of you. Some of you may feel a rush of energy because as the Hara line repairs, energy is able to flow more easily in it. And Hilarion is telling me when we form the heart source, the Hara line is within the center of that heart source, that line that connects us to the center of the earth and to the center of the universe. Your healing team is now concentrating on sending you the vibration of energy you need to repair, balance, and clear your chakras. 
actually doing this for eight chakras. And the eighth chakra in the way that we're using the eighth chakra here goes back to other lifetimes. And we are activating the plug-in for the healing over lifetimes right now. If you don't know what that means, don't worry. Your healing team knows exactly what that means. I'm being given instructions that some of you, so everybody ought to do it just to be sure you're not in the, be sure if you're in that sum, it happens is that to go again and breathe in the color for the light of God for you and exhale any energy that needs to leave. I usually, people see the exhale color in different ways. For me, it's like a dark cloud or something. Sometimes it's brown. I've had other people have all different kinds of colors. It doesn't matter what you do. Inhale the light of God, the color of God for you. Hold it as it runs around your body and cleans things out and then exhale it. Good, and now we are going to be focusing on the brain and the nervous system all at the same time. First, for the brain, we ask for the exact vibration of love needed or the range of vibration of love needed to clear our brains, our physical brains. And in that clearing, we are including balancing and healing all arteries and veins within there. If there are any weaknesses in any part of the vessels within our brain, we ask for healing in that vessel and strengthening in that vessel. We ask for the vibration of love needed if we have acquired any plaque within our brains, that that plaque be dissolved now and just notice the color coming in. I'm seeing, maybe it's just for me, but lots of yellow coming in and a green that's kind of underlying it, but it might be different for you. We're all different. Some violet coming in. Okay, and now the exact vibration of love needed for our limbic brain. And every part of our limbic brain is being addressed and some of it separately. So the hippocampus, which has to do with memory, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, to clear anything and bring balance to anything that is not according to the divine blueprint, the cingulate gyrus, the thalamus, I'm being told they're sending energy that relates to all of our senses, vision, which connects with, well, it has the thalamus and connects with the um, Oh, what's the one? An occipital lobe in the back, both sides. Now, for those of you that are having problems with your eye, there are energies coming in to clear the cornea. I've already had cataract surgery, but to bring things into balance for those of you who have cataracts growing to clear the cornea. For those that are having problems with the retina and the macula, For those that are having 
difficulty with the muscles in the eyes. So it can bring about farsightedness or nearsightedness, astigmatism. There is energy coming in to balance the aqueous and vitreous humors, those liquids inside of the eye. Interesting. There's uh, an energy. It's going in through the brain in many different ways, but it's I keep hearing the word nystagmus, and that's a funny movement within the eyes back and forth. And that that portends that there's something else going on neurologically, but I getting that that is being addressed and the cause of that is being addressed. And now the cranial nerves. So you have the cranial nerves that go to the eyes, to the ears, to the tongue. I had Bell's palsy a number of times in my 30s and the trigeminal nerve affects the eyes, the ears, and the uh, and taste, and the cheek and all that kind of stuff. Those of you who see my many times quirky, quirky kind of off balance smile, that's due to the to the uh, Bell's palsy that I had. Okay, and there is a yellow energy coming into the nerves, the cranial nerves, and also dealing with the hearing. You know, hearing's one thing you can really tell when that changes, right? My left ear, I've been working on it coming back to full hearing again. Okay, and I'm getting that there is work now in the sense of smell, in the sense of taste. And there's a balancing now also happening with everything affecting your sense of touch. And this is not only including like touch with fingers and stuff, but it's also going to affect sexual experience. Just let that happen. An energy coming in to balance the hormones of the pineal glands, the pituitary gland. There's some other places that hormones come that are coming from the, within the uh, brain. Some of them not really noted yet by most people. Let that happen. We ask that, that hormones, those hormones be balanced to every organ or body part that is needed, an endocrine gland, which is needed to be balanced within the physical body. And I understand that scientists have now said we actually have six senses and that sixth one, we're talking third dimensional world here, that sixth one is proprioception. It's notice, noticing where you are, where your body is and how it's moving within space. And I'm really looking forward to that balancing because I have some issues in that area. If you have problems like you bend down to pick something up off the floor and your body goes too far forward, that's proprioception. And now notice that as your nervous system is being addressed, there is energy moving down your cranial nerves, one of them is the vagus nerve, which goes all the way down the center of you. There's three branches. The spinal column itself and its connection to the nerve plexus 
or is it plexuses <laughs> within your body? One, two, three, I think there's four of them going all the way down your spine and now out to what they call the peripheral nervous system. Those of you who are having any problems with neuropathy in any part of your body, speak to that body part and say, it's okay. You're going to be okay. And it is safe to allow the nerve impulses to come in so that I can feel with my hands, with my feet, and just say, there's no need for pain. And ask your healing team to pay attention and say, healing team, please eliminate the cause of any numbness or pain within and just state what it is. There you go. Now they're gonna bring in a different color. Not all of you will see all of the colors because you may not have issues with that particular part of your body, but we're now going to go through what we call the different organs. We've already done the nervous system, the heart, and the cardiovascular system, all the way through the veins and arteries, including those little capillaries. Notice what is happening. Ah, healing team. Please note the primary wounds which are interfering with the cardiovascular system coming into wholeness. Now, this is going to involve complexities that your healing team is going to take care of because it is not only emotional wounds, which is the primary thing, but how it affects your physical body and your energy body. So the heart chakra, for instance your physical heart, some of you make the request, please adjust the clotting factors within my blood so that my blood follows the perfection of the divine blueprint in clotting. Now, those of you who are having, like you've just had surgery, for instance, I know some of you have recently had surgery. If you are having uh, other things going on with your body, wherever it is that involves the circulatory system, just direct your healing team to that. Say, I am ready to release whatever might be the emotional, mental, spiritual cause of this dis-ease or dis function. I don't know what word to use for that, but where it's not coming in, remove that and bring healing to it using the four foundational plugins, basic healing over lifetimes, removing victim consciousness, and look for any implants that are holding in energy that is no longer needed. There you go. Lungs, moving to the lungs. There are probably all of us holding in grief of some kind, some of us more than others. Healing teams, Ama, Abba, we are ready to release that grief to you. The losses we have experienced, losses of childhood, innocence, Loved ones. Okay. okay. 
we're now going to hit all of the digestive things at once. I just looked at the clock and Amo wants to do this healing. This is something for y'all to listen to at different times. Digestive system. Saliva in your mouth. Stomach. Duodenum. Liver and gallbladder. Even if you don't have a physical gallbladder, you have the energy of it. The pancreas. All of those are bringing energies of digestion in. Body, soul, we want the optimum digestive ability that is outlined by the creator in that wonderful architectural drawing of ourselves called the divine blueprint. The different colors of light around you are changing. Good. And now our elimination systems. We're going to do the kidneys and bladder and all of the things that are within there to come in. And I'm getting a message. Yes, we will bring in the energy needed to begin the dissolution of kidney stones, gallbladder stones, which are also liver stones. Bladder stones. There we go. Asking for the balancing of all sphincter muscles. Those of us who are older may be having a little trouble with retention of urine. We ask for the balancing of that and the strengthening of that. Okay, the other elimination system, small intestine, which works with digestion, and our colon. And I'm getting a message that a special light energy is coming in, color, which is a color, coming in to dissolve polyps, to clear diverticuli, to assist in peristalsis, which will remove debris that's in there. We're balancing hydration in the body. That energy is moving down through, up, across, down through the colon and into the rectum and the anus. Some people are having problems in that area. There you go. And now the lymphatic system. And healing team, we now ask that according to the divine blueprint, balance our entire endocrine system, the hormones that we are needed, may it be in communication with what the liver says we need and what the brain says we need and the neurotransmitters within the brain. And if you're listening to this, you can hit pause if you need to hit pause. And now we ask for the exact vibrations of light needed to clear our muscles and tendons and ligaments which are holding in energy we no longer need. And the message I just heard, which means you need to stay in your heart source more, work on doing that, releasing that.
and we ask for the exact vibration of energy coming in that is needed for the muscular skeletal system to be in alignment according to the divine blueprint. Okay. And the last thing that we're going to do, and I know I'm going kind of fast here because we, we've reached the end of our time. The last thing that we're going to do, healing team, we ask you to find that place in our DNA that we have blocked. This came from one of the past life things I was listening to, that we have blocked our connection with God and living our life to the fullest. Let's just let that work right now. You may have something come into you. Are you willing to? And you get to answer yes or no. I suggest yes. And now Amma says, this is your message today, is to do this healing and repeat it as often as you can. And know it is wrapped in the love that the creator has for you. And you may stay on that healing table or in that healing chair as long as you. Many, many blessings to you. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday ceremony. And I'm going to let you just stay there as long as you need. And I send you my love. <laughs>